Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about the new release of Transmart, which is currently in beta. So this sprang out of uh, release 19.0, which was released uh, three years ago. Um, some of that work was done by Paul Aviat's group at Harvard. So they, uh, they updated the Grails version and, and Java versions, um, aiming to get things more up to date. We added uh, various extras asset pipeline for all the JavaScript and CSS and images, updated various drivers. I did some of the ITB2 schema, so it's much closer to ITB2. Changed all the strings to date time values, which was a long standing request for Transmart, and cleaned up some of the ETLs. And we've been doing rather more of that in the last uh, couple of years with support from uh, Dell. So 19.1 is currently in, in beta. There's a code repository on uh, GitHub. You can download from the, uh, the foundation's library server. And when the beta release goes full, you'll be able to download the full release there. Um, we've updated the support to support Postgres 12, 13, and 14. So Postgres versions go up rather fast these days. They used to go 9.1, 9.2, and they changed the system. So minor releases are now look, look more like major ones. Um, updated all the database drivers, um, RServe and, uh, and R itself. Updated Kettle for the ETLs and various dependencies. Updated a lot of the third-party libraries. So for example, the log4j issue didn't really affect Transmart, but we've updated the libraries to make sure that that's covered. Some of the other libraries were, were quite old. Other ones, we've seen more advisories coming out. There have been a lot more recently. So the Postgres drivers had two updates to address these in the last uh, few months. We keep uh, updating those, but they're very easy to, to update the libraries. There's just a bit of effort in testing. So some of the things we've done in 19.1, we've set all the data columns to have consistent widths. Um, partly in that we matched the width that I2B2 uses by default, um, something that's that was started in 19.0. So that means some of the columns have got shorter in Transmart than they, they were before. You can extend them. It won't cause a problem. You'll just uh, won't be quite the same as the I2B2 defaults. Um, and we're matching those across all the Transmart tables as well. So if a, um, various IDs are used across tables. If they're in ITV2, we use them in all the transport tables as well, the same size. Uh, that gave us some problems. Um, some of our users found that some of the data values were too long to use. Um, and the ETL crashed, but it didn't actually tell them where the problem was. <laughs> it's somewhere in their data. So we've added some checks uh, so that the procedures can now check and report. There's a value that's too long. There are so many values that are too long and they're here. So you then know how to fix your data, or you can go to the database and increase the maximum length for that column. There's been a long-standing issue in Transmart that when you load up expression data from multiple platforms, or you load up RNA-seq for multiple uh, sets of genes, um, you have multiple um, annotation platforms to load up to represent the probe IDs or the genes. Um, and it was quite hard to know that you needed to to load multiple ones when you're using the library server. We fix that by saying, here are all the platforms that you need to load for this study. And it just goes through all of them and loads them in one go. So there's a single ref annotation target for all the updated studies that just lists all their platforms. In uh, Transmart, we also have the Browse tab, which is a, a great way to get metadata of all your studies, search for the study of interest. Um, but it's very hard to load the data and very hard to maintain it especially for the public data, stu data stu uh, studies that we have on the library server. So we've added um, ETL targets that will load up the data for the Browse tab and data for the, the programs, the groups, public studies, or particular diseases that you're loading under. And so you can now load up that data automatically, and we can add the metadata onto the library server so that you can load up um, the, the, all, the, all the Browse metadata for the study in one simple command. Also updated some of the Oracle stored procedures, and we've done the Postgres ones for 19.0 and uh, updated some of the Kettle scripts there. We've updated some of the metadata, so genes for human and mouse are updated as the latest ones in Entree. Uh, quite a few genes have had their names changed. I don't know if everyone noticed, but genes changed their names because if you made an Excel spreadsheet, Microsoft in their infinite wisdom changed Mars, SEP, and DEC genes to dates. And if you look in data from GEO, you often find there's a date instead of a gene. 
and you have to figure out which gene it was. And uh, you know, Ma nine, uh, 9th of March is Ma9 and so on. So those genes have been renamed. And so we've got the updated versions in there. Updated diseases to the latest Medline subject headings, which is what the Browse tab uses by default for, for metadata. So COVID is now officially a disease. We'd uh, added the temporary ones in uh, 19 zero. Um, added procedures to add your own metadata, adding new, defining new species and concepts. There's also a very useful script that will load all the data for a study. So instead of loading the clinical data and the annotation data, and then the expression RNA-seq data and so on, you can just load the study. And what that does is it finds clinical data and loads it first. It looks for annotation data and loads that next, and then loads all the others. It checks the log files and looks for signs at the end that there was a successful conclusion to the, the load. If there wasn't, or if it doesn't find any success, then it looks through for any error messages and tries to report those for you. So that takes a lot of the pain out of um, running these ETLs. We also looked at the efficiency of ETLs. And so we've, there have been issues in up to 19.0 with large data loads, sites with large numbers of subjects or large numbers of large amounts of data for each subject, but things were slow. And we found several places where things were slow. They've been sped up more than a hundred fold in some cases. Um, things like building the uh, building the concept tree and generating the uh, subject counts, both run very much faster now. So if you've had problems with uh, scale up of data loading, certainly 19.1 should address those for you. We've added new installation scripts. So we're building scripts that will load directly onto uh, Ubuntu 18, Ubuntu 20, 22. Um, we'll just quietly drop 16 and 14 because they're too old and adding support for other Linux flavors. And the, the scripts are now merged and uh, simpler to maintain and update. So adding new operating systems is relatively simple. We figure out the names of it, all the packages that need to be loaded and the commands needed and just uh, run the updated script. We have Docker containers. Um, these originally came from Denny for Bake at uh, at Janssen. Um, they've been updated and uh, extended and cleaned up and tested. So there are five that you can uh, set up and run. Transmart DB gives you a Postgres database um, preloaded. Uh, Transmart load is the ETL procedures that you can use to add uh, studies to that database. There's a solar server for the, uh, the browse metadata and sample data and so on. There's an rserve server that's R pre-built that saves you going through the pain of installing R on the system. And there's Transmart app, which is Transmart running under Tomcat with uh, Guava and with uh, the help, the Transmart manual. I kind of suggest that you don't run the Transmart DB because it's really no more effort to install your own database and populate it. And that way there isn't a simple Docker command that deletes your database. On the other hand, the RSERF one is really rather useful because after a few months, R tends to change and there's always the risk that the R install is going to break because there's some change to R or some of the packages that are installed. So a win and a lose there, but you can uh, run all of those. They're all available on, uh, on GitHub. There's one script that basically downloads them all. Some other things we did was, was work with the, the ITB2 support. So we had to do a full merge with the ITB2 schemas. So I had weekly calls with Jeff to go through all the differences. We've added all the schemas, tables, views, sequences, triggers, indexes, foreign keys, so that if you install Transmart, what you have is an ITB2 database complete plus the Transmart tables. We also added a target to load the demo data. Um, it's a slightly modified demo data because we found a couple of issues in the data and, and tweaked them. Um, this was things like patients who've been in the database for 12 years or more, and uh, their ages don't match their date of birth anymore. So we just tweaked those so that they came up correct when you analyzed. Um, queries were an issue because Transmart used the same tables as I2B2, so now it doesn't. We've moved the, all the Transmart queries to their own tables, just rename those tables and copied them. Uh, if you load ITB2 data into Transmart, Transmart declares everything that it doesn't know as a Transmart study as being ITB2. Um, and then 
it can analyze it, but we only allow access by admin users because there's an issue that we haven't put any security in yet for who can see the ITV2 data. We assume that if you're running both together, then you have your own internal setup of who can get on and run it. But yeah, ITV2 can run on a transport database. We've done that, and Jeff demonstrated this at AMIA last year. And there's still a demo server running with both of them. There are some issues in running Transmart on ITB2. So one of them is that ITB2 assumes you have human data and human patients. Transmart loads any clinical study it can find, and that includes studies on different species, mice, rats, ferrets, monkeys, or cell lines. You don't actually have to have a, a patient and organoids. So things like age don't have much concept there. Um, your cell lines tend not to be even one year old and age is an integer. Um, you can, of course, load up some other um, concept as uh, age of the cell line and have, a, have it as a units of days. ITB2 puts all the data under one concept tree, while Transmart has concepts by study. So you load up whatever the study called things, typically. Um, and so if you look at it in ITB2, you're going to find a lot more trees there with the study name at the top. Uh, one issue we found was that ITB2's demo data had numeric concept IDs, which was a bit of a surprise. Uh, Transmart had assumed it was the only package that had numeric IDs. And so we found a few concepts were, were duplicated. Um, we fixed Transmart to have a TM prefix. As long as ITB2 has no concept IDs beginning with TM and a number, we'll be safe now. Um, ITB2 also obfuscates the patient counts. That's not what Transmart does. So if you look at ITB2 data in Transmart, it will tell you how many subjects there are. Transmart has no concept, you know, Transmart cannot tell a lie. It has no concept of obfuscated numbers. So if you use the Transmart interface, you will see how many subjects there are at any point in the tree. There are some issues with time. Um, ITB2 has timestamps for data. So you can have multiple values in ITB2 with different time stamps on them. In Transmart, it tends to be time intervals for a study. So what you actually do is you load up data for the baseline and data for week one, week two, week three, month three, or whatever for, for a study. And so you never have two uh, facts with the same for the same node with different times. So we need to find a fix for that and uh, persuade Transmart to cope with the time intervals that way, it will give us a lot of benefits. So what we could do is when we load up, a, say, a geo study, we can set a start date and an interval, and we can calculate timestamps for everything and just load them up as common facts with timestamps. We can then sort out the, uh, the data export for analysis to cope with those timestamps. We can get time-based analysis very easily. Um, at the moment, Transmart goes by the annotation of the time points in the tree, and it's a little bit flaky. This will be much more easy to, to manage. Um, but we need some funding to, to take those steps. But it would be uh, very helpful for the Transmart community, I know. Um, we looked at a single sign-on that Jeff's been working on with ITB2. So Transmart already has code for SAML, LDAP, or Zero. But each of those was only implemented for one user. So SAML was done for users in the Netherlands, LDAP for a pharmaceutical company in Europe, Auth0 for a user in the US. Um, and we need to, to work through and harmonize those and figure out and then uh, merge the SAML implementation with I2B2. We're aiming to do that. Uh, and then once you get on, there's the issue that Transmart has study access management, so which studies, which basically which nodes in the tree and transport you can access per user. I2B2 has its own way of, of managing access to data. We need to integrate those. If you've logged into Transmart and you're accessing I2B2 data, we need to find a way to, to check what you're actually allowed to do as that user. And the same the other way around. Uh, so we've managed to load data into I2B2 and Transmart. We can view and query both. We can um, query both ways around. There are a few issues, but it's it's basically there. The database works, and we can work to uh, to clean up the differences. Uh, those issues, I think, are covered. Yep. Some features that we're putting back in in Transmart. We had automated testing in there back in the days of sixteen point three, but it's not being kept up to date. Uh, we're updating it for 
it says Jeb 4 there. I think Jeb 6 is now out. We'll update for Jeb 6, updating the, um, the web browser versions for it. Um, and then we want to update the tests. So ideally, we would like to be able to update the user manual by testing all the examples in the manual and making sure that they work and where the outputs change, we'll report the updated out, outputs in the new manual. And uh, the product management committee are advising on most useful features for, for testing and what to do there. We've got installation scripts. Um, it's a simple install. I think I've done that one. That's just a sample of some of the one, other ones that we want to add. Other things we'd like to do, um, queries to compare studies. So Transmart tends to work on one study and analyzing it. But if you've got two studies that are comparable enough, it would be nice to be able to compare them. Um, doing queries based at the sample level rather than the study level can be very handy. Um, Time-based queries, as I mentioned, if we have time intervals in there, would be useful. Um, adding additional data columns for particular data types would also be a good way to extend things. Um, and then adding support for new data types and adding some new data columns. I think we can generalize adding new data types to make that easier. But again, we need funding for development and support. So projects that need these, um, we'd like to work with you and see what we can do. For support, we have the uh, the old uh, Transmart Foundation support email address. Uh, you can also email uh, axiomedics, support at axiomedics.com. Um, and there's a uh, a Transmart Wiki and also the, uh, the Zendesk um, help desk at uh, Axiomedics with documentation and uh, updates. Um, you can also um, talk to Keith uh, Keith Elliston from Axiomedics, who I believe is there today. You can raise your hand, Keith, if you like. I can't see you, but okay. Um, that's what I had. If you have any questions, I won't hear them unless someone repeats them over the microphone. 